Well, depending on what part of the world you're in, good morning or get, good afternoon or good night, I don't know what it is, but um, welcome everyone to the Give, Send, Go Spotlight TV. We've been doing this for just a couple of weeks now, um, where we take a moment to spotlight campaigns that are making a difference and shining brightly all over the world. I have a real awesome treat for you guys today um, with Morgan Common on Many of you might know him most recently for his time at Facebook and some of the information that he unveiled with, with Project Veritas. And so we have, uh, he, he used Give, Send, Go, and we wanted to bring him on here so that he could tell us a little bit about himself and the journey that he's been on in all of this. And for you guys to get to know him and, and maybe even support him uh, for this step of faith that he took, his campaign, I'll repeat it now, repeat it at the end, but it's givesengo.com slash expose Facebook. If you want to see, a, you've blown past your, you know, fi over $500,000, absolutely amazing. Um, the amount of funds that you've raised by people from all over the world, and we're going to dive into that. But um, thank you for, for tuning in, everyone that's out there. Morgan, thanks for having, thanks for coming on. Why don't you just start by telling us a little bit about yourself and kind of your your backstory uh yeah so my name is morgan common and uh basically i i uh i worked uh as a data center technician for facebook at one of their uh, primary population data centers for their services and uh one day i came across some documentation that was some technical evidence of some censorship that was going on at facebook specifically regarding uh vaccine content and vaccine hesitancy is what they called it um, and I decided to take this to uh, Project Veritas, and uh, you can read the story over there. And uh, but basically, what ended up happening ultimately was I was fired and let go from my job for this, uh, you know, act of courage that I chose to take on. And uh, you know, they didn't really like it, so I was fired, and I didn't have, you know, I don't have anywhere to work or anything like that. And I have, uh, you know, my wife is seven months pregnant, and I have a two-year-old boy, so you know, that's a lot of re re responsibility. Um, yeah. And so basically, through Project Veritas, I was able to. Uh, get some attention to start a fundraiser and when it came down to decide you know what kind of fundraiser i wanted to do and where i want to do it i thought about places like you know other crowdfunding places like um uh gofundme and stuff and i i heard it there's even they were engaged with groups you know with censorship and they would find certain things that they didn't like and be like oh well you know there's going to be some kind of complication with the fundraiser and we can't give you the money and then they can never be clear about it and i and i, I saw that happening in the future i didn't want that to happen so uh, I wanted to go somewhere that I could trust, at least more than I can, more than I can trust a place like um, GoFundMe. And so I chose Give, Send, Go. Uh, and one thing that really attracted me there was you guys' Christian values. And I think that, you know, I have Christian values as well. And because we had that in common, I think that that was able to provide a lot of trust be between me and the website to be like, you know, they probably won't do something like this because this seems like a lot more of a base or a place that's based on uh, morals and values and stuff like that. And so okay. I went ahead. Yeah. Awesome. No, I mean, that's, that's fantastic. And, and I will let you know, you were right on the mark with that because our platform and, and as much as in, in the midst of some of the politics of things, things have kind of divided in, in left and right. Our platform isn't, isn't about that. It, it, we allow freedom to exist on our platform. You know, not every campaign that comes on our platform, I agree with, but we want to stand for freedom. I mean, I think that that's a fundamental core value of our platform for people that are out there listening to that. Uh, this this is what we're going to continue to stand for as a platform. And definitely, um, we see campaigns run on both sides of, of the spectrum. And we're going to continue to press forward into that and, uh, and allow that to happen. Um, so, so it was through that collaboration with Project Veritas and seeing, you know, kind of the, the value systems at play that you chose to use Give, Send, Go. What's been your experience after using Give, Send, Go? What's your, what's your take? Uh, we always love feedback. You're, you're the best feedback that we have for people in using the platform. Um, what's your feedback? So from, from all the facets that you could look at, um, the, the, you know, the, Give, Send, Go itself, you know, the performance of the website, the user interface, uh, those things are all wonderful, but also just 
the, the community that it's been able to bring together. I was shocked. You know, when you go to the dashboard to control uh, your campaign, you can you can look at there's more than just people donating. You know, people can share it and they can also send you what are called prayers and they can send you messages and stuff like that. And I would just sit there. I had thousands of these prayers. <laughs> I, would sit, I would, if I was having like, you know, a particularly, you know, tiring day, like, you know, cause I've just been in contact with so many people and when, you know, so many interviews, I can barely keep up with it. And sometimes I would just open my phone and I'd go and look at these prayers. And it was just really nice because people, would, even if they couldn't donate, they would send you messages and be like, you know, me and my whole family are playing, are praying for you and we're thinking about you. And that was absolutely wonderful. And that was people from around the, around the, the entire world on there. And, that's, that is, you know, that's literally probably our best kept not secret, which is the intangibles. I mean, it's one thing, this is, and this is, this is the why behind we, the, behind Give, Send, Go, is we recognize that money, super important, help people fundraise to do great things in the world and make a difference, which is what you saw with so many people donating to, to your campaign. But there are some things that money just can't buy. There are some things that money, it just doesn't hit. And uh, GoFundMe, it really has a real narcissistic ring to it. It's always had that with me. It's all about me, my endeavor, what I, and, and there was, there was most of the time that people find themselves in a place of needing to fundraise, there's an element of the intangible involved in that. That, yep, raise money, it's gonna help something, but you know, I just lost my job. I have a lot of other things. Money might, my, money might not solve all of those problems. Uh, or I just lost a child in a tragic accident or, or whatever it may be. Money's not going to solve that. It might help do a couple of things. And so that, that pray now feature, that pray now button was such a powerful way to get messages from people to campaign owners like yourself to do exactly that, to carry them through the difficulty of the journey that they're walking out. And like, that is absolutely amazing. We try our best because we know some people sneak through and they try to throw some crazy stuff in there. We try to, <laughs> our best to, to filter some of that stuff out with certain algorithms, whatnot. But um, I am so happy to hear that that was, that that was, has been something that's been uplifting to you. Yeah, you know, and I, I was even getting messages in there uh, of people with contact information or or with su suggestions saying, hey, you know, I, I know one place that's looking for tech people, you can try and get a job here, which is absolutely wonderful. Oh my goodness, so, yeah, uh, that's, that is absolutely fantastic. Yeah. It I, was, it was, it, it, it's, it's really a, a, a rallying point for people, even if they don't, can't donate money, they can go there and follow the story and, you know, it directs them to other places as well. And I yeah. think that's uh, really valuable. Yeah, one of the new things you may you may not know this or even have it experienced because we're backlogged the amount of campaigns that we're having, but we started a new feature, um, which has been another really great build off of that pray now button, which is a team of people here um, that we've hired that are aligned with our value systems and everything, and they actually call active campaign owners and they say, "Hey, listen, oh yeah, can we pray for you?" and they called uh, me. Yeah. Oh, seriously, someone called you. Yes. Mm -hmm. oh, that's, see, I, I, you know, you, you oftentimes, sometimes you get feedback on it. Sometimes it's hard to get feedback. So somebody called you, left you a message or actually talked to you. Uh, they left me a message. Yeah. It was, it was really in the midst of when everything was happening, but yeah, they called me and left a message and you know, it, it was a voicemail that was like this long. It'd be a nice paragraph of a little prayer for me. It was wonderful. Uh, yes. Was, I mean, the, the testimonies, the feedback from people, I and mean, we get emails coming in daily saying, I just had somebody leave me a voicemail. I can't believe that a, a startup, like a, a tech startup -y type of company would, would call and actually be concerned enough to, to put time into, you know, just pouring into me. And it does feel that way. It feels like that you guys are concerned. Yeah. Well, that's exactly, I mean, the people that are doing it are amazing, amazing people. We love the people that we have. Um, that are doing it, they they just have a heart for people in the situations that they're in. And they really are concerned about the things that people are going through. And um, we've seen some amazing story. I mean, one guy, I'll just share this with you, just so you know, some, some of the other things that have come out of that. One guy, he he's going through cancer. He's posting on YouTube, his, his video log of his journey through that. And he was having a crappy day. He starts off his video log, crappy day, has to go to the doctors. He's going to get a bad report. He just knows it. He hates the doctors. They're always, and it was, he was in just a, a really bad mood. 
And then the video cuts and it pops back up. And he's like, he's sitting in his car outside the hospital. And he's like, guys, you won't believe what just happened. I just had a stranger call me and ask to pray with me. And they were able to give me some words of encouragement that completely changed my perspective going into this doctor's visit. He said, my outlook is now completely changed because someone took a moment to, to step into my world and, and speak some life into my situation. And he's like, I'm just blown away by this. And, and I see this for Give, Send, Go as such a tremendous opportunity. We're, we're in the middle of this pandemic situation and, and people have been forced into isolation in ways like never before. And, and as, as much as social platforms have allowed levels of communication, we wanted to push the barrier and say, how can we break past that, break into people's bubble that they've pushed, you know, been pushed into and actually engage with them and yeah, show them that people still care. Exactly. Yeah. So, wow, that's super cool to, to hear that. And I will make sure that I pass that on to the team. So, so moving forward from here, you, you have this campaign, you've outpouring of support from people all over the world. Absolutely incredible. Um, you're, you're now trying to figure out what your next moves are. So, so what does that look like for you right now? Uh, so it was absolutely amazing. You know, we were able, my wife and I, we were able to raise enough money in this fundraiser that we can afford, uh, you know, to find a house for, you know, that we can actually own for uh, us and our kids and everything and, you know, generations to come. And so we're looking for a house right now. Um, and then also I'm looking for, uh, obviously I need some income. So I'm going to be looking for a place to work. And I've got a couple of proposals in the works right now, a couple of people that I'm talking to. So that's going to be in the immediate future. Okay. Sure. So, so um, you, you mentioned your wife's expecting, not going to dive in too much, but um, so the family's growing. Is it good? You got a, you have a little boy already. You got another girl on the way or a boy? What is it? You know, it's going to be a girl. Yeah. You're going to be a girl. All right. Right there, right down the middle. That's perfect. <laughs> yeah, we're excited. That, that's awesome. I, we started the same way. It was boy, then girl. And then uh, a couple of years later, it was surprise. Here's another boy, which we weren't really planning on having happen. But, you know, sometimes <laughs> those things <laughs> slip right through. And, yeah. um, and now we also foster. We actually just adopted uh, another little girl so now we had to balance it back out but you're you're pretty <laughs> even right now one and one you know it's almost yeah. like you know keep it keep it right there um well so any any other yeah just just curious how long were you at facebook prior to to, to all of this happening uh i started working there in the uh, summer of 2020 so almost okay not 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 quite a year probably like the uh yeah not almost a year, but not quite. Okay. And what was, uh, what was your, what are your proficiencies work-wise in, in working there? What were you, what was your skill sets? What were they hiring you for? So my primary skill sets were, uh, I'm really good with computers and everything related with computers. You know, I've been doing it since I was a kid. And uh, while I was there, I did stuff with uh, physical server systems. So I would go in there and uh, swap out hardware, you know, do maintenance okay. and repairs on hardware, RMA components back to the manufacturers and stuff like that. So. Okay. And the computer hardware stuff, server hardware. All right. Hey, well, we might have to be in touch with you about that. No worries, no worries. <laughs> we always need some good tech guys to be able to figure out some of this. The, 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 um, we're, we're even, you know, in our journey, obviously, we host with various uh, companies right now. And um, there's levels of independence that you want to get to knowing that there's always a potential for them to pull the rug out from underneath you. Very valuable, uh, that independence. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and we're getting to a place where we can really start seeing that path in front of us of saying, okay, how do we start, how do we move in that direction so that we are not beholden to, um, you know, Silicon Valley in that respect and that That's we, awesome. yeah, that we can continue to maintain. I, you know, I, I look at my dad owned a local business growing up and he had no dependency the way that many companies today have on uh, a supply, an individual supply chain that can completely decimate your business if you're not ready. And I think yeah. we've, we've put way too much reliance on certain systems 
with no redundancies, nothing else in place. And anybody that's smart listening to this, if you've got any, any system like that, start thinking redundancies, start thinking defensive posture, just on having, and that's just good business sense. It's like, yeah. You got to be independent. You, you got to be able to, you know, pick yourself back up if something fails. Exactly. Exactly. This isn't, and it's not some even conspiratorial anything. It's literally just having a good business sense about you. You want your business to continue to flourish. The fundamentals. Maybe, yeah, it is fundamentals. And, and I think they can be, especially in the startup world, they can be glossed over because you, you get so many other pr pressures that you're trying to drive forward and you're just relying on, on what's there to get past the next hurdle. Um, but, but if you can start thinking about those things, super important um, for the growth. Morgan, before we go, is there anything, you know, any last things that you, your, your, your involvement with Project Veritas, um, I, you know, from what I've seen, don't know them overly personal, had, had uh, you know, some, some, you know, slight conversation, but um, your involvement with them, it seems like it's been very successful. They, they seem like an amazing yeah. organization. Professionals over there, real professionals. Absolutely. Really? Okay. Yeah. So, so guys, as anybody that's watching this as well, um, you can see more about Morgan and the story over there at projectveritas.org, I believe it is, projectveritas.org. Um, and you can hear about uh, what they're doing over there, people that are ringing the bell of freedom for um for the world that we live in today and kind of yeah is exposed if you also if you want to work there they have got openings right now they got several openings they've got some social media uh like handling type openings and stuff like that so if that's your thing go check okay. it out um and if you if you yourself want to work with them you can go to veritas tips at protonmail.com okay is that how you this was there a you were just, you were seeing this information at Facebook and you're like, what do I do with this? And that, yeah. and okay. So, yeah. So you go to their website. Um, I'm not sure if it's .org, but I think it's projectveritas.org and they've got a button there so that you can submit tips to, and you just click on it and you can email it to them. You can, you know, submit files to them, anything. So I have a, a, a question just popped into my mind. You know, typically I'm a military veteran. I had a top secret clearance. When part of the, the clearance procedure was, even though you, may have, you might have a top secret clearance, there's also compartmentalized information. So it's just need to know. So there are things that you, I might have a top secret clearance, but because I don't need to know that, I don't have access to it, even though it's, sure. you know, falls with, you know, underneath my clearance level. Um, so I would imagine most big companies like Facebook and some of these would have similar type of systems in place for certain things. Do you think the information that you saw and exposed to that they just didn't think it, that it was a big deal? Um, or do you think that you, you were just granted that access? That's how you were able to see it. Um, or was this access that pretty much most people, employees at Facebook would have had and um, and nobody else just decided to make that step that you did. Yeah, so this was actually posted by, uh, by a person that worked there on site. I'm not sure if you worked that, at that site or some other site, but it was posted to the regional, um, it was an FYI group. So there's like, an, there's like a Facebook group it, within Facebook online, right. and it's called Workplace. And uh, it's like a social media platform for employees there. And he posted it in an FYI group that had like 700 to 1,000 people in it. So many people saw it. Uh, I think basically what it was is Facebook, I think they got a little overconfident. They kind of oversaw like, well, maybe people, I think they overestimated how much people actually agree with this. Because mm -hmm. the majority of comments that I saw on the platform were like, oh yeah, this is really exciting. This is great. But then when I would talk to people outside, like in, around the water cooler and in, in person, it was the complete opposite. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I think a lot of people saw it, but not a lot of people, I think people are just too afraid. You know, Facebook has a lot of power. They know they're, it, it could be said on some level, they're not beholden to the U.S. government even. They're a global company. They, uh, yeah, they do have a lot of power and um, I think that people are scared. And so uh, there were, there were, I tried to dig deeper. There were, and there were, I got, I did get to a point where I was denied access to whatever uh, I was trying to access. So yeah, there are some things I wasn't able to get, but what I did get, I let out. Yeah, I, I recently saw a Tim Pool interview or, you know, conversation that he does, and he was talking, there was an article, a poll just came out about a, the silent majority and how there really is a large group of people that are very hesitant to vocalize 
um, their beliefs because of what they fear is the backlash, you know, so, so they might go along with something on the face, but the undercurrent is, wow, um, you know, I, I just can't say anything out there because of potential re repercussions, but I really don't hold those beliefs fundamentally. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I had, I had, I had messages from, there were, I had comments because you can attach a comment to a donation on Gifts and Go. Yes. I had comments attached to an to donations from people saying i work at a big tech company and i agree with you and i'm donating to you because i can't do anything mm. and and even without comments like that just the fact that how fast this money was raised is absolutely incredible oh half a million dollars in such a short amount of time i yeah. mean that that's a death testament to itself of the silent majority right there yeah no it's without a doubt there are there are thousands and we've seen this um, with with several campaigns that have popped up, there are thousands of, uh, you know, hundreds, millions of people out there um, that, when moments like this come, they're willing to put their money where their mouth is and actually um, support and and help continue to foster people like yourself. That and that's the whole name, give, send, go. It is goers like yourself that are the the action walkers of taking things out, and then there are people that are financially resourced. To enable people to do those things, that's the give exactly. part. It's it's the the joining of of these parts to make the reality happen. The givers and the senders and the goers and the catalysts. It, yeah, exactly. And and that was that was the foundation for that for the name. We're like, well, it doesn't just. It's not just all about funding me and my endeavor. This is about a partnership between people that can financially resource, may not be in the position to expose something themselves or whatever, but are willing to. Uh, help somebody along their journey and what they're doing. And what you saw was the proof of that. Thousands and thousands of givers from all over supporting him. So excited that you were able to use our platform, that it was successful for you. Uh, gr extremely grateful for the opportunity for you to come on. Um, we're going to continue to push these, create these videos, expand this, this view. Hopefully we'll follow you as you go in the future. We'll stay in contact. If there's anything that we can do for you, um, feel free to let us know any other comments as far as, you know, we can even take some of this offline, but, so, you know, how we might improve the platform better, um, things that you might see, might, might say, oh, this could have been helpful. Our development team is, is working on it all the time. So we, and we've, got, we've got a lot of cool things coming out. We've got cryptocurrency about to come on. We've got a whole new Ooh, facelift. I'm a big fan of crypto. Okay, yeah. No, so we, we've got... Yeah, that, that should be, we're at the final stages. Um, it's in some beta testing right now and hopefully work all the kinks out and that will open up a whole nother venue. Again, it's redundancies in payment systems. We don't want to rely completely on traditional payment rails, you know, the legacy rails payment systems, because you can see the writing on the wall. We had Discover Card seven, eight months ago say, oh, well, we're not going to let any of our, our givers donate to on the platform Give, Send, Go. It's like, oh, yeah, excuse me. Like, who the heck do you think you are? You're telling your people that they can't give to things that they want to give that are completely legal endeavors. These are not like these are not things that are legal. Like we our platform doesn't allow illegal stuff. These are legal things. And it is crazy. So we're always saying, OK, what are the what are the things that we can institute that, you know, will continue to expand that that, that opportunity for people to be able to give and in not as traditional means in different ways. And cryptocurrency is a big one. So we're excited about that. And um, even a new payment system that we have um, that ties into the legacy systems that is going to be less sensor-based than what we have right now. Um, so a lot of exciting stuff on the horizon for us. We'll stay in touch. Morgan, uh, definitely appreciate you being on here. And um, we look forward to, to staying connected in the future. All right. Yeah. Sounds good. Give send go.com slash expose Facebook. That's right. Yeah. Um, there we go.